This podcast is brought to you by the North Dakota Petroleum Foundation. From heating our homes and powering our vehicles to cell phones, clothing, and medical equipment, oil and natural gas makes everyday life better. North Dakota Oil and Natural Gas, advancing the possibilities. Learn more at ndpetroleumfoundation.org. Welcome to Plain Talk Live. I'm your host, Rob Port. So we're going to talk about a couple of things today. First of all, Simone Biles. Um, The Tokyo Olympics are going on. I don't know. Personally, I I have a hard time with the Olympics. I'm going to cough now. (laughs) That's always a great way to start off the show is uh, having to uh, go to the cough button. But uh, I didn't clear my throat enough before I started. Um, I have a hard time getting interested in the Olympics. I I have a kind of passing interest. I want to see the American athletes do well. Um, I kind of track the medal counts, you know, I, I like to see America up at the top of the list. Um, but beyond that, I have a hard time like watching gymnastics. Like I, and I'm not, I'm not judging other people. It's just not my cup of tea. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. those are tremendous athletes. Uh, I'm amazed by the stuff that they can do, but on a given evening, I think I'd rather just read a book, but I, it was hard to ignore this stuff with Simone Biles because everybody seemed to have a hot take on it. And I'm wondering why, like, why do you care? Like, like she, she felt like she couldn't compete. So why all the hate? I mean, I was, there were, especially in conservative media where there were people like, like, she's not representing America. I saw like Charlie Kirk was calling her a sociopath and all this other stuff. And I'm, I think there's this impulse that we all have because we all have social media that we all feel like we have to have a take on everything. And Hey, maybe you don't. Also, the other thing we're going to talk about is evictions. The eviction moratorium is coming to an end. I have worked. Uh, I actually used to serve. I once, once upon a time, I was a process server. I used to actually go to people's apartments and serve them eviction notices, or if it got that far, serve them a summons and complaint, telling them they had to go to court because they hadn't been paying their rent or were violating their lease or something. Uh, Jay, I know my guest, Jay Thomas, host of the Jay Thomas Show on WDAY AM 970. Uh, he has uh, worked in the the rental industry as well. And Jay, let's, let's start because there's a, there's a federal moratorium issued by the CDC that's going to be expiring. Uh, Or wait, has it expired? It 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 has expired. It expired at the end of the month. That's right. I forgot. We're in August now. Um, The moratorium has expired and there's a lot of people who are upset about the Biden administration because there was, there was a last minute campaign to pressure him into, into continuing the moratorium for longer. He didn't go along with it. And, uh, and now we are, why are people, I mean, what do they think is going to happen? We're just never going to, we're just never going to evict people again. I mean, what, yeah. what do these well, people want? It's, you know, and, and let's not forget a judge came out too and ruled that the CDC overstepped their bounds. And, and I wonder too, it's like, how can the CDC just, just put these rules and these, uh, uh, moratoriums in place, but yeah, the, the, the whole, uh, uh, renters thing that's yeah, done, it's over. And I don't get it either, Rob. At some point, people need to grow up and get their butts back to, you know, back to work and pay your bills. And what what about the people that own these properties? See, that's that's the other thing that gets me. So if, if if I work my butt off and I want to invest in my future, my retirement, I choose, I, I'm going to go out, I'm going to buy some rental properties and, and that's going to, you know, that's going to pay for my mortgage and, and maybe at some point start pocketing a little extra money and uh, tuck it away for retirement. So now... Uh, so now I have to go and, and possibly lose my property because people don't have to pay their rent. I mean, how is that any different than me paying my mortgage? Nobody stepped up and stopped me from paying my mortgage payments. That's pretty much like rent. And when you think about it, y- y- yeah, you own your home, but you never really own your property. You're paying rent forever. But nobody nobody covered my butt. I had to go out. I had to work. I had to pay for it. Look, I understand that things got tough there in the beginning, people losing their jobs. But I mean, come on. Enough is enough. I mean, there are people actually sitting out the United States Capitol protesting with signs that are saying no rent anymore, that they should live for free. Yeah, I, I don't know. I understand how a society exists without property rights. Like, like, like I have I have ownership of property. And so I agreed to allow other people to use my property. And we draw up a legal agreement for the terms where they're going to pay me a certain amount of money. And I have certain rules on how they can use it. And then as long as everybody's abiding by that agreement, you know, life goes on. Uh, but somehow, like, like they think, why, why would anybody, if we're not going to pay rent, why would anybody make that housing 
available in the first place. And by the way, here in North Dakota, we never had an eviction moratorium implemented by the state. There was a lot of pressure. I know like the ACLU came out. They wanted it. Um, But our our state officials never did. For a little while, the state Supreme Court implemented something. Um, Mm -hmm. I think it was just a matter of weeks, two, three weeks, something like that. Yeah. It was, and, in, it was in the and real I, heat of the COVID. And I, I think they overstepped as well because the court – it was a policy decision because they, they did it. Like the court obviously has administrative control over the courtroom. So if something's going on, the courts can say, well, we're just not going to hold court. But the thing is is they picked a very specific type of proceeding to not allow anymore. It was just residential um, evictions. It was, Commercial evictions were still happening. All the rest of them, it was just residential evictions. Yeah. I criticized them, and I think that's why it was short, so short-lived. They overstepped where they're going to make a the, – as the courts are going to make a policy decision that residential um, apartment landlords can't evict people. It's ridiculous. And, and the thing that I don't understand, Jay, is, is you, can make a, you can make an argument saying, well, during the pandemic, we don't want to just kick people out into the streets at a time when we're locking – you know, obviously the lockdowns were very controversial yeah. and everything. But, but – Setting that argument aside for a moment, the argument is we don't want to be kicking people out during the pandemic. We're spreading this virus. It's just going to make it worse if we're making people homeless or whatever. So we need to keep them housed. Okay, fair enough. Is the best way to do that preventing people from being evicted? If if we want to accomplish that goal, we can have a debate about whether or not this is the right policy. I'll tell you, I'm more comfortable just paying people's rent for a while, just having the government Mm -hmm. pay the rent, than I am telling a landlord, you can't evict people. Yeah, because, again, you know, and people have this mentality that just if you own rental property, that you're this rich guy or gal, you have all this money. Just like you know, people think that if you own a business, you're just automatically rich and you can afford to, to pay this wage or that wage. Hey, you own all these properties. Uh, you can afford to go with all collecting rents. No, you can't. I got a lot of people that are friends that own uh, multiple rental properties, including our son, our youngest son owns multiple units here in the metro area and he's far from rich he bought those because he tucked away his money and he thought you know what real estate down the road is going to be a good investment for me and if if there was a a uh, uh, a moratorium where he couldn't kick people out because they weren't paying the rent he'd lose everything you know i mean we have got to move on as a society yeah COVID is still out there but this stuff's gotta end People need to quit depending on the government and quit depending on everybody else to take care of them. You have a responsibility as a damn adult, and that is to take care of yourself and your family. Go out there, get a job. Well, it's like now you got this. Uh, how many states now that are being sued because they dropped the federal um, extended unemployment money? Um, and, and you hear some of the interviews with these people that are on the lawsuit. Well, I had a job as this, and I lost my job. Uh, the funny one is Florida, where Florida has a half a million job openings. Yeah, it sucks. You lost your job during COVID, okay? But there's other jobs you can go out there and take. Go work. Go take care of yourself. Stop depending on me and the government to take care of you. You are not my responsibility, okay? That's simple. Go be an adult. Good Lord. Well, there's, there's also there's also like where the government when the government intervenes like this, we stop things from from changing. Like like if, if we're like like rent is a function of supply and demand, like everything else. Right. Like how much no nobody who has a like if you're if you're trying to offer up and get people to lease a property or lease units in a property. You don't want those units sitting empty because the property is no. costing you money. You're paying taxes on it. You're paying utilities on it. You're paying maintenance on it. All of that stuff is just lost money if you don't have revenue coming in from renters to pay for it. So, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the landlords aren't going to charge rent that's higher than what somebody's willing to pay because yeah. they want people in those units. But the problem is if you get the government in between there and the government starts interfering in that market, then the ability of rent to reflect actual demand is compromised. And, and now, now we create all sorts of other problems where rent is just not going to be like rent could be artificially high because we don't have units coming open because the landlords can't evict the people who aren't paying and replace them. So where are they, what are they going to do? They're going to go looking to get their revenue elsewhere. If your rent's going up right now, 
I would argue that at least a part of it has something to do with the fact that your landlord may not be able to evict the people that are costing him or her money. That's right. That's exactly right. And, and, and you know it. You served uh, papers, uh, legal papers for, for evictions. I worked uh, for about 10 years uh, in the property management business and tried to evict somebody. You, you think knocking on the door and telling them um, you haven't paid your rent, you're out of here. That's how it doesn't work that way. It, in some cases, it takes months to get somebody out. So now on top of how many months these property owners went without getting any rents, and I don't think they can go back for back rent. I, I don't know. But my point is now if these people still refuse to pay rent, okay, let's start the eviction process. That could be more months on top of months before that property owner sees anything because that person that just got evicted isn't out the next day. They could occupy that unit for months before they're out. And that means months, months, months more before that unit can be rented to somebody that's going to pay some rent. I, I think you got to understand, too, how much of a risk. Because I would I would surf papers. And usually how the process went, and I, it's been years since I've done it, so maybe things have changed. But, you know, the first thing they did is they sent me out there with a notice of intention to evict that I had to serve yep. on the person. And then I had to give an affidavit saying that they got the notice on such and such a date and time. And then after that, if they didn't do anything, the next thing is usually, usually it was more than three days, usually about a week or so later, I turn up with a summons and complaint. And this is the actual initiation of, of a, of a court proceeding, right? An actual in court eviction proceeding, but they usually have 30 days to respond to that. Um, you know, so if you think about it, I mean, that's just, and that's just the, the that's just the bare minimum, right? Usually there's continuances and, and yeah. like you're dealing with the court calendar. When yeah. can you get in front of a judge? If it goes that far, if somebody's really determined, they could squat in your home for months and then think about it. If they're already not paying rent and, and the, the judge evicts them or whatever, and they did damage to your property, right? Maybe they didn't clean, they stained the carpets, they were smoking in there and they shouldn't have, they had pets that were, that were damaging things. Uh, the holes in the wall, whatever it is, busted appliances. Uh, what's your likelihood of getting that money back from people who Still already not. aren't paying? Like maybe you get a judgment or something. Then you got to spend money to try to collect. Um, you know, yeah. you're in a no-win situation. You're not going to get your money back. You're well, going you to you're going to lose. You got, their you, you got their deposit that they put down originally, but 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 I'll tell you that may not cover plus it. Plus percent of the time that deposit does not cover. Because what's what the average? Lost. What's the deposit like? Five hundred bucks or something? Yeah, it's usually first month or rent, or yeah. one one month rent, right? So depending yeah. on the type of place, so maybe it's a thousand bucks or something. But boy, uh, you know, you it. you bust a refrigerator and put a hole in a wall, and you're and you're there. Uh, and I've yeah. I've seen I've seen some apartments that I was evicting people out of that. Boy, they were gonna have to. They were gonna have to take it back down to studs. Well, uh, remember was... when I when I worked in property management, I worked on the uh, maintenance side. I, I ran the maintenance departments for one of the biggest rental companies uh, here in the uh, area. And you're right. You go in there and look at some of the. You just shake your head and go, "All right, gutter. You got a gutter." You know, I, and I I think I think again. I'm not against, and I don't think you're against, I'm not against safety net programs, right? Something like the pandemic comes along. It's an extraordinary situation. Yeah. I'm not against helping some people, right? I'm not against giving people uh, a, a safety net that they can hit and bounce off of and then get back to work. That's what I'm in favor. But an but eviction moratorium, anymore. right? An eviction moratorium is not that. There were better ways, I think, to help the people who needed help than doing this so well, i'm if you if, if you look I, I caught it uh latter part of last week rob and it was yeah you know, i hate to uh uh compare like a new york city to where we live but i think it was new york and there were millions upon millions of dollars uh, that were supposed to go to help people take care of their rents and i god i want to say the number was like of the 50 million, only 3 million of it has actually gotten to the people. 47 million of it is just still sitting somewhere tied up in red tape. It's just, come on. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's some of the, um, the unintended, I guess, consequences or, or side effects or whatever. Um, and, and by the way, uh, kudos to the Biden administration. I don't say this often. Kudos to the Biden administration for standing strong and, and yeah. letting it expire. Cause they were under a lot of pressure from their political oh, yeah. base to do it. And, uh, <clears throat> They did the right thing. They let it expire, and now we can move on. And hopefully, you know, unfortunately, there's going to be some pain, right? Because the market's sure. going to have to correct 
itself mm-hmm. from from having the moratorium in place for so long. There's going to be a pain for a short period of time, but I guess that's the price we pay for implementing the wrong well, policy in the first place. Here's another problem that has come up too with this uh, eviction moratorium is that what people what people have been doing in uh, in, in some cases is they haven't paid their rent in months, you know, over a year. So what they've done is they've turned around and they've sublet their apartment out to somebody else. That person's paying them rent, but they're not giving that rent to the landlord because the land they don't have to pay rent. So, so on top of all the free money they're getting from the government, they're renting out their space that they're supposed to be paying rent for, and they're keeping that sublet money. And the, and the property owner is getting screwed over twice now. So let's shift gears. Let's talk about Simone Biles. Did, did you follow this story? And and the reason why I'm interested in the Simone Biles story. And by the way, my my, my for my two cents for what they worth, I, I don't I don't feel like I'm qualified to judge. When I look at what some of those gymnastics do and what they put their body through, yeah. uh, it's I mean it's it's it can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing and you're not you're not right to be out there. What they're doing could be dangerous. I'm an overweight middle aged writer. I have no business telling a a 24-year-old world-class athlete like Simone Biles whether or not she ought to feel right to go out there and and compete. If she's not feeling it, I'm going to take her word for it, right? I I don't want her to go out there and break a neck or something or to do something that's, that's, you know, uh, can't be undone. Because she's she's suffering from I, they were calling it the twisties, twisties. which I guess is a real phenomena. It where is. I, I I read up on it and I actually I've got her on my program this afternoon. Uh, Robin Hubner, who works for Forum Communications, uh, was on television for years as an anchor. Uh, she is she is uh, was a world class gymnast too. I think won the seventy six nationals. She knows gymnastics, and her and I had a good talk. And, and I'm like you, I I don't. I just I don't follow the Olympics. It's just not my my bag. Now I will say this: I love watching the Winter Olympics. I love curling, the bobsledding, all that. Hockey. Um, but you're right. You know how many of these people that are ripping uh, this Simone apart um, <laughs> have not one ounce of athletic ability in them at all? They just all of a sudden think that they, they are these these you know they they know it all about uh, Olympics or gymnastics. And, and you're right. Um, because when this first story first came out, I'll be honest, I'm like, oh, God, she lost she lost a competition, so this is what she's going to do? Now we're, we're like, oh, my God, I'm, she's quitting because she didn't do as well as she wanted to do? But then following it a little bit and reading up is going, okay, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? She had every right to do that. And you read up on these twisties, yeah, this can mess you up. I mean, you, you make one wrong move. You're right, Rob. You're talking possible broken neck. I mean, possibly death. Now, that may sound, oh, my God, you guys are being dramatic. No, that's the case. And you know what would happen? What would happen if she said, look, man, I'm mentally not there. I got the twisties. And she went on to perform anyway. And then, God forbid, she ends up severely injured or dead. Those same people that were ripping on her about what she's doing now would be ripping on the Olympics for not having her stop. You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I, I, I think people are just out looking for something to bitch about. You know, I, I, I th- that's exactly the point. That's why this story interested me. I, I It feels like everybody's got a platform now, right? Everybody's yeah. got Twitter. Everybody's got Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or Snapchat, whatever, or, or, or multiple accounts on all of them. And I feel like everybody feels like they have to have a take. Right. And, and not just people in the business like you and I. Right. Because you and I, we have to come up with topics. I have to find things to write about. You have to find things to talk about. Um, it's, you know, you, you try to find interesting things and hopefully have an illuminating conversation or write something that's interesting about that. I feel like so many people you, you hear about people having hot takes. Right. Like, oh, it's a hot yeah. take on this or that. I, I feel like everybody has a platform now. And so everybody feels like they have to have a take. On everything. And then it bleeds over into the news media. Because my, my least favorite genre of journalism is the people are mad about something on Twitter genre. Right? As if there's any possible topic under the sun that you couldn't go on Twitter and find some people who are pissed off about it. Like yeah. there's a rainbow in the sky and people on Twitter about this goddamn rainbow in the sky that's just yeah. t- that's just torquing them off. Right? I, like like that's, that's news. People are upset on the internet. That's not news. That's Monday. 
Yeah, right? I just, I, life. you don't have to have a take on everything. You don't have to have a take. Simone Biles isn't going to compete. You don't have to have an opinion on that one way or the other if you don't want to. Yeah, how, how is her not competing? How is that having any disruption or effect in your life? Uh, uh, honestly, you know, I mean, these people will, will start commenting or start, you know, writing about it, about, oh, my God, I can't believe she did this. At the end of the day, what, what how is it affected your life at all? I mean, come on. Really? Yeah. Yeah, she's a, she's an individual. She won uh, she won four gold medals at the last Olympics, if I'm if I'm remembering yeah, right. She, yeah, she won the G- Olympic gymnastics uh, in 2016. Yeah. Right, and and said I think she I think she tied the record for most gold medals at a single Olympics by a by a female athlete, which is fantastic. I mean, what does she have uh, what does she have to prove to a bunch of overweight keyboard warriors on Facebook or Twitter or whatever? Nothing. Like, gosh, Simone Biles is a disgrace to the United States. Up yours. Yeah. Honestly, get a get a life. Find something else productive to do with your time. But I, I gotta I gotta scour the internet to be upset about things. And then you have these people. Like I was reading uh, Charlie Kirk, who's a who's like a conservative, like very pro Trump commentator. I'm sure you're probably familiar with him. You know, he, yeah. he's, he calls her a sociopath, right? Well, you know what that is. Why? That, that, why, that's, why? Why? why is she a sociopath? Because Charlie Kirk needed to fill some airtime. That's why she's a sociopath. He needed to fill some airtime, and so he's going to call her a sociopath. Well, I mean, i got to fill airtime for three hours Monday through Friday. But right, but your show is very it. different. Like, I'm, I'm yeah, talking wow. about it. There's a way to do what you and I do responsibly. Yeah. I feel like I do it that way. I feel like you do it that way. And we're not just going out looking like, boy, what could I say today to piss a bunch of people off? That's not what it is. It's like, boy, this topic's interesting. Let's find some facts. Boy, everybody yeah. believes something about this that may not be true. Let's look at the other side of the story. That's valuable. That's important. Oh, not did, n- you, did you see the new one? No, I got to give. I, mean, I don't know what's going on with Bill Maher. I think this guy's starting to come and see, and see the other side of life. But I have I have found I have found a, a newfound respect for Bill Maher. Yes. But these people doing the same thing, ripping on uh, on surfing in the Olympics. And how the sport now, the, the, the woke crowd, this was stolen from this group of people. Now it's a bunch of white people that have stolen stolen this sport and, and they're jumping on the bandwagon. And it's like, and Bill Maher said, basically, are, are you people flipping nuts? They're people having fun in the damn ocean. It doesn't matter what their background is. I love, I, I love baseball. And one of the things I love about baseball is how international it is. I, I, think, I think of the American... I'm trying to think of other sports that are more, and really the only one I can come up with is soccer that is more international, international yeah. than, than baseball. Because baseball, you have, it's hugely popular in Asia. It's popular in, in like Mexico and Latin, the Dominican. I mean, Dominican Republic is famous for sending, you know, first, first rate baseball players into the major leagues. Um, I, I love it. I, I love how universal, but baseball's a, it's the American pastime, right? Although we yeah. kind of we kind of stole it from some like like there's obviously some common roots between like cricket and baseball and that but baseball's yeah. the American sport. I'm not out here getting upset because Japanese people are playing it. I think it's great. They've sent some awesome players to the United States. Play the hell out of baseball. It's a fun sport. If surfing's your thing, you should be glad that all sorts of people from all over the world are surfing. Be happy yeah. about it. It's awesome. You're going to see, like, like the more people who are doing it, the more talent that's going to be there, the better surfing you're going to see. It's fun. It's good. Be happy about it. Just like my favorite sport in the Olympics, curling. Everybody does it. <laughs> is that going to be, is, is there going to be an outroar because, you know, well, this team won and, and, and this nationality stole it from this one. I where mean, did, this, where did curling come from? It. I don't even, I don't even know the origins of curling. Where, where did Which, that, where did that come from? I, I have no idea. I grew up uh, Northern Minnesota, big curling, big curling part of the yeah. country. I, I don't know what it is. It's some guys throwing rocks down the ice. I love it. I can't. I can't watch enough of it. I love curling. Great. Oh, by the way, who I like like surfing? Like, is there one specific group of people? Because like you think it's something like archery, right? There wasn't one culture. Like multiple cultures figured out independently of one another that they could use strings and wood to like shoot other pieces of wood and use it as a weapon. Um, so who owns? Who gets to own? archery is it the english is it is it the chinese is it or maybe it's just a thing that humans do and we should all enjoy it 
Yeah, I, it's, I, I'm trying to, while we're talking, I'm trying to find that uh, uh, that Bill Maher, uh, uh, hold on here, uh, Rips. Uh, it was hilarious. I mean, it's like, wow, Bill, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of liking you now, man. Uh, lately, you've been, uh, oh, yeah, it was, here it is. Here it is. It was, uh, people were upset because the woke folks out there feel that that this sport was stolen from the Hawaiians, and and, and that's that's is that, uh, is that where surfing? I I don't I know nothing about the history of surfing. So Hawaii is I, that I where either. it's? I have a feeling that was probably more than just Hawaii. I mean, if you look at if you look at like like Pacific Islanders, that's actually a very diverse. That's not all the same culture. I'm willing to bet that these people whose cultures you know came to be living on beaches or living on these islands. I'm willing to bet that surfing was probably pretty common independent among all those cultures. Yeah. I'm thinking the same thing here. Um, dang it. I can't, I can't, I can't find the whole story, but it was, it was like, wow, you know what, Bill Maher, a lot of times I think you're a nut job, but boy, lately you've been nailing stuff. Uh, yeah, here it is right here. Mar he got upset at the, the, the cultural appropriation, uh, Line says there are only two native Hawaiians left on Earth and doubts that they birthed surfing, pointing to the 20-odd thousand islands in the Pacific. How do we know that they were the first to stand on a board on water? It seems like it's something that any person near any ocean would do, would eventually do. There, he said, but let's say a Hawaiian did invent surfing. Should he or she have to keep it to themselves? Let people go out and enjoy the water. I, I, the cultural appropriation thing drives me nuts because it's, it's, it's the same people, right? If you did a Venn diagram, the two circles would be almost, almost completely overlapping for people who are saying, well, we got to have open borders and we got to have all these people from all over the world come here. And, and by the way, I am for legal immigration and I very much believe that one of America's great strengths is people from all over the world have come here to find sure. prosperity and success and everything else. I'd like them to do it legally. I'd like to have yeah, an orderly no. and well-controlled process for allowing lots and lots of people to come here and legally become American citizens and enjoy yeah. the bounty of our society. That's what yeah, I want. Yeah, that's that's going on right now on the southern border. But, but uh -huh. the thing, a side effect from that, when you start mixing all these cultures, is we're going to be appropriating the hell out of each other's cultures. We're going to be eating each other's food. We're going to be wearing each other's clothes. I thought that was a good thing, but now I guess we're supposed to segregate our cultures, and I'm apparently only allowed to walk around in animal skins with a horn helmet because I descended from Vikings. That's I can't wear anything else because that's what my ancestors wore. That's right. Well, yeah. I mean, and we're seeing it more and more every day. I mean, even, you know, Disney, when Disney puts out a movie and people lose their minds, how can you have this person wearing this or that person wearing that? Uh, you know, uh, I've said this for years and say it again, social media, it's been a good thing, but it's just, it's also such a yeah. scourge on society. Man. And, and, and by the way, journalists, like, don't write that story. Like if your lead is people are upset on Twitter, just don't write it. Nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody cares. I right? feel like I did. Cancel your Twitter account because Twitter is nothing but a drive-by shooting. Yeah. That's all Twitter is, man. Yeah, I wish I could. Yeah, I would. I, 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 pro I promote my work. That's where the audience yeah. is. I put it there, but I'll tell you, I don't spend a lot of time reading it because I'll, I'll respond to people who want to have a conversation with sure. me and I'll, I'll roast some people who are trying to roast me, but I'm not, I'm not real interested in, um, uh, in this thing where everybody thinks they're their own. And maybe this is elitist of me because you and I obviously have our platform. You know, I have my columns and stuff. You have your radio show and maybe people could say that we're elitists and only we're allowed to have takes on things and nobody else. I'm not saying that no. I'm saying you don't have to weigh in on things, right? Like you don't, you don't need to feel obligated to fill up social media with your hot takes. You know, if, if you, if you, if you have something you feel like you want to add, then I guess do it. But like Simone Biles, what does that have to do with you? Nothing. Just leave it yeah. be. I hope she, I hope she, she's going to compete now on the balance beam. I hope she does great. You know? Well, you know, again, th this is something I wouldn't be touching, but I, I just, the way this thing has exploded, uh, uh, like I said, I'm going to have Robin Huebner on the, on the radio show this afternoon to just to explain what these kids go through. She went through, I mean, you know, uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be talking about, but again, it's become such a big story. Human, what, they, what they have to give up. 
What someone like What's Simone that? Biles has to give up to serve in the Olympics, she's probably been in training since she was a fetus, right? She yeah. pro- Do you think she's ever had a Twinkie in her life? No. Right? Do you oh, think she's yeah. ever had a bowl of ice cream? I mean, what, what that takes, I mean, maybe she has, but it probably ain't often. Because what it takes to compete at that level is unbelievable. So you take that amount of lifetime sacrifice that she has put in to get to that moment, and you think that she's just not going to compete on a whim? She's not yeah. going to compete because she wants to disrespect yeah. America or something? Whatever. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, you know, it you look on social media, Rob, and I don't care where you go, Facebook, Twitter, you know, here's the other thing. It is the same people. That's their whole life. You can look at a gazillion different stories and it's the, you got those same people responding on these stories. Like, what do you people go, go outside, get some fresh air, go do something. Read a book. Hey, hey, how about read a book, read a book and then tell us about the book you read. Go watch a movie, go play a board game with your family. You don't need to weigh in on Simone Biles, right? I just, just stop. Yeah. Anyway, well, uh, I'm, I'm actually not normally on a Monday. I would be on with Jay at 2 p.m., but I had a, a personal, not a, not a, I'm going to say personal situation. My, my kid's daycare turns out to be closed for the afternoon. So I got to be dad uh, all afternoon and that can't Boy, be on the Boy, that's something I'm hitting today on my show because lately I've been getting emails and messages from parents saying, Jay, you got to bring us up on your show. It's a topic I've done in the past, but it's been a while. And they're telling me that what they're paying for daycare and trying to find daycare, how expensive and how nearly impossible, if not impossible, it is. And I think the reason that's coming up is because, you know, we talk about you can't fill these jobs. All these jobs are going on open. And, and then I've got some people say, well, they're going on open because there's parents out there that can't find daycare. I'm like, what do you mean you can't find daycare? I think that's what started stirring the the messages we need, uh, and emails from listeners. I, Nobody hit that one. I, I, I think we had a problem with affordable child care before the pandemic. I can't imagine the pandemic's done anything positive for that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we need to take a long, hard look at how we can make child care more accessible and more affordable. And I maybe a place we ought to start, and people are going to see that because I, like, I'm just don't don't care about the safety of kids. Maybe right we need way. to maybe we need to look at how hard it is to own and operate a childcare center or to work as a childcare person. Um, Cause it's I mean, the stuff that they have to comply with. I mean, at one point the city of Fargo was going to regulate the type of juice that daycare's concerned. That. Oh, I mean, man, that was, that was I mean, and the, the, some of the that. stuff that they have to comply with is absurd. I mean, listen, yeah. we all want our kids to be safe, but I think there's some things we could do to make operating a childcare center easier. And thus, uh, and thus, uh, cheaper and, and more accessible for everywhere else. But anyway, it'll be interesting. I'm going to be tuning into the show. I just can't be on it today. Jay, thanks for your time as always. Thanks, brother. Talk to you soon.